Howdy y'all, DJTJ here, RollToWound.com. In this tournament battle report, I'll be taking my daughters a cane to Atomic Hobby Shop in Cypress, Texas. So, let's get ready to roll. Alright guys, this is um, my final game with uh, my current Daughters of Cain list. If y'all follow the channel, y'all know I've been playing this pretty similar, uh, this list basically uh, for, a, for a couple months now, you know, getting it to the GT, getting it painted and all that. Um, I, I really was excited to, to go and play some OBR or some Soul Blight for this tournament, but we have the new um, Ideneth book coming out and the Ishland War Scroll was going to change everything. And I knew that pretty much after last weekend, I was not going to have an opportunity to ever play this exact list again. So I said, hey, we'll give it one more go. I was, I've been feeling pretty confident with it and its play style and what I can do with it um, after, after Lone Star and having enough work with it. Um, I will admit that the list is really good. Um, as far as like the damage output, what it can do, I ha have not been the greatest pilot of it. Uh, I think that the, um, the, the fragile nature of it has really, really hurt me and me trying to get into the play style and figure that out has not really gone my way. Um, I've started to pick it up here at the end and started understanding what I can and can't do. But at the end of the day, I need a couple more rolls to go my way and they haven't really been falling and that's totally fine. Um, I'm going to put them on the shelf after this tournament until probably the summer when the new book comes out. And then, you know, we're going to revisit them later in the year. So for all of you that are sick and tired of seeing me play, <laughs> play not well with Doc, um, this will be the last tournament battle report with them for a while. So let's get into the first game. All right, so we're here on Feral for Eight. We got Ben and uh, Ben State yeah. Seraphon. Haven't played Seraphon in a while. I think, well, this is it puts me in a weird spot because he, his list will be in the description. There's going to be a ton of more wounds and shooting come out. We're so far away on this deployment. I, I'm not guaranteed any first turn anything for charges. I'm pretty much mostly out of. I think you put, deployed out of 24 inches for double shot, right? Uh. For my uh, yes, yeah. So uh, at least I mean maybe some skinks are arranged, but the biggest problem. Care about. Yeah, the biggest problem that I'm looking at is that the, the timer's going to start on Marathi as soon as he starts going. So I'm probably going to have to take the first turn and just take some points and um, take a take a battle tactic and hope that I don't get double. I think that's where we're at. All right, so my turn. Magic was not that awesome. I pretty much got. Uh, I did get Black Horror off and did a couple wounds to his Basilodon. Um, I did the Wrath of the Scathborn and put the Running Charge on um, my, my Bloodstalkers over here. Ran a pretty, did a pretty good run. They had a, had pretty good movement on that. Had a, had a pretty good charge. That, and when so I set everything up. Casting was sort of the end. The big thing is he dispelled Mind Razor on a 12 or something. So that was that sort of sort of hurt them with their damage output. The shooting just did some chip damage here and there. He's really not in range for a double shot. I went in and took the first turn, like I said, because I just didn't want all that crazy pile-in damage all over my army. That chip damage um, got really lucky with a roll over here. I think I rolled like a 12, the 12 inch charge, yeah. for a tw charge. I think I needed like a nine. They got in and I put everything into the slam. Took the slam out. Return fire didn't do anything. I lost one and a half from the Bastilodon Overwatch, and then um, a Crystal Touch. I took out his priest. 
So uh, my battle tactic was run, so I ran three units over here and got battle tactics, and uh, that's, uh, that's where we're at so far, going into Seraphon turn one. Oh. All right, hold on. Uh, so we just finished up Seraphon, and I'm going to let Ben talk about what happened. Yeah, um, a bit on the pitiful side. Uh, nothing moved because everything worth moving was tagged over here. Uh, I was trying to kill these bow stinks for my battle tactic. Uh, my plan was to fly him over, but I completely forgot that my guy who gives me fly is already dead. Um, so he was kind of just landlocked over here, and I, in hindsight, I should have moved these guys out, but their shooting into the cursed unit of uh, snakes was uh, too good not to pass up, or too good to pass up. Uh, yeah, in hindsight, that was a mistake. This guy could have definitely killed that unit if he could have, if he could have gotten in. Uh, shooting a little bit lackluster, in my opinion. Um, this guy definitely whiffed against the uh, Ishland Guard. Um, the, both the Basilidon and uh, Chief on this side did some work against the Bow Snakes enough that... Uh, and, and you got enough healing up too. You re yeah. I chipped everything down and then you healed pretty much everything back yeah. up. Um, it, it's usually a choice with them because I'm either rolling 2d6 or 3d6 if I have my slant out. And it's like 2d6 if I really want to fish for that healing, 3d6 if I want to heal for the uh, fish for the mortal wounds. Uh, but you killing the slant really uh, helped my decision because uh, he gave me no decision. Uh, yeah. But a big thing that happened over here is notice I have one bow snake left, and only because he basically shot the hell out of him, double shooting with the Bastilodon, and a little chip damage from uh, your your terrain piece put a mm -hmm. couple wounds out. And my choice was I had one CP. It was pretty much to save two points for a battle tactic because if they would if they would have ran, I could have rolled a one, they'd have been fine, or a two. If they would have ran though. That's two points for him, and I ended up rolling and losing five extra snakes. So I'm down to one snake over here. Um, so we're going, and I, how many did you end up scoring for this? Two? Uh, just two points. So yeah, um, the priority. Going to priority, and two wounds on Marathi. Four to six. six. Yep, yep. Figured uh, that. So I gotta take it. Yep. Four again, and a four again. Three fours in a row for me, so I can't complain. Leave those, leave, leave those dice for the Ishlin. Yeah, so, oh, the Ishland, yeah, he actually shot the Bastilodon into the Ishland guard over there. Four shots ended up going through, and I think they tanked every single shot. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, this isn't looking awesome. All right. All right. What, um, what happened? Pretty um, big-ish turn. Um, I, was, I was more so trying to set stuff up, but I kind of just retook my side of the table. Uh, did my best to... I, I still feel like I'm on the losing end of this. Uh, <laughs> I, think, I disagree. I'm probably going to get tabled by the end of turn three. We'll see. Uh, yeah. I haven't been getting my, the damage into Marathi that I thought I would be, so I yeah. still, I have solved that to deal with. Um, yeah, that is not going to be an issue. Um, pretty much he moved up, and I will say that the MVPs of the game for me so far have been my uh, Bloodstalkers because mm – -hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, Blood Sisters, they have just, they tanked and tanked and tanked oh, yeah. and tanked and it took an impact hit from the um, Stegodon to kill them. Mm -hmm. I, I used the CP to save those, both snakes are gone, and Rathi has only got three wounds on her total from a whole two turns of him, so yeah. that is the one saving grace. Yeah, I knew it was going to be pretty pretty but nasty. You, you, can, you can see the, the lack of wounds on Marathi, like, you can see where the wounds have been going. Yep. Else, elsewhere. Yeah, definitely. And from the terrain blowing up, my general also has three wounds. I, I, I gotta. It's. I would normally do it like a, a safe bet on the closer ones because on the closer ones, two up instead of the four up. But I just got super lucky blasting that twice. Yeah. And I think too, it's going into my turn. My battle tech. It's going to be an interesting one. What I. I mean, I got some safe ones I can do, but. Right. I mean, pretty much at this point, like I know you said, oh, it's. You basically have 90% of the I, I, I just damage so I put in. with all my hero loss. Yeah, it, did, it, it helped me, but think about that. Like, it helped me, but not winning that priority didn't allow me to keep pace because now I don't I don't have any damage output other than Marathi, and she's too swingy against those high armors. Right. So we're going to my turn. I'm going to figure out my battle tactic, see what I can do that's worth doing, and playing for points at this, yep. at this iteration. All right.
it was like a very long turn for not not a lot going on because we just had so much measuring and weird stuff happening. So basically, for I took um, two units in his territory, so I had a spearhead. I got Marathi off, and because I was able to get Mirror Dance off and move Marathi into this terrain over here, I uh, basically ran these daughters, uh, the witch elves, back with the hopes of possibly achieving a battle. Uh, my grand strategy at the end. I also teleported her way outside of combat in the corner just with the hope of keeping my general alive denying him that battle tactic um, and away from terrain. Marathi got Mind Razor put on her and she went finest hour um, which is going away. She charged in, smashed the temple to rubble, um, killed the unit of skinks that popped out and put all her spear attacks into the Bastilodon. Seven attacks, hit with everything, wounded with everything. That was going to be a minus three rend with four damage a pop. He yeah, saved all the saves, all the four up. so it did not work out in my favor. Um, points, and I will, I took that did, point. Yeah, you did get five points off. And I will go ahead and, and burn uh, it. You're not within an inch of it. Oh, even right there? Oh, you're right, I'm not, okay. So, a, yeah, I, that's right. The thing is, it's like basically, and, yeah. and I did correct it because it was oh, yeah, over yeah. here a little so bit. So, not burning still. the point, but I held it and I held one, held two, held more, battle uh, tactic. Correct, see if I'm wrong on the. All right, yeah, it is an inch. It is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, we'll go ahead and just roll for turn three. Five. Oh. Yeah, I have to take it to achieve another battle tactic. All right, so wrapping up my turn real quick. We're short on time. Basically, I took Monster's Takeover. Marathi stayed within six inches there. Um, the Kenarai pulled up, burnt the point. I was able to kill the Bastilodon between shooting and the, um, the early attack. Mind Razor went off with Marathi right here. Marathi killed it. Basically, the Bastilodon died before charges. So then Marathi was able to turn around and charge his uh, Stegodon. And we got it down to two wounds. He wrote really good on some saves oh, yeah. and some. Um, he takes his uh, wars. Yeah, and he, he did nine, four. nine wars, uh, four passes, five fails. Yeah. So that's pretty good, but it's, it is what it is. So now he's going into his turn and to figure out what he's going to do. All right, finish up game. We end up with a loss. Got a couple battle tactics we sort of talked about at the end. And. That, that was it. It was a pretty pretty close game, pretty close score-wise, because of me getting that double turn and able to um, go in there and start killing some stuff. But on his swing back, we sort of just talked out what would happen, and we talked out turn, war, uh, turn uh, four, and uh, came down to like a point or so. And that was that was what it was. But not, no big deal. I think it ended up being like 12 to 2 was the final score. So fun game, fun game. I'm just excited I got to kill the temple with Marathi. That's the funnest part. All right, so there you have my game one against Ben. Um, Ben's a really nice guy. Uh, known him for a very year or so. He's been in the AOS scene over here in the Houston area, and he's been playing Seraphon, which, if you know me, have been the bane of my existence for, for pretty much all of AOS. It seems like any time I run into him at a GT or anywhere, I've not been able to uh, to get past him. Uh, so I knew it was going to be a hard matchup going in because Seraphon are still really powerful. Uh Especially against Doc 2, because of all the chip damage they can do, they're putting wounds all over the place, and they're taking down your combat efficiency. Um, if I had Keltnar, I mean, if I had to run Hagnar, that can sort of negate some of that. But since I'm running Keltnar, I basically said, hey, I'm going to have to take the first turn. I'm going to have to hope and get lucky and start taking him out and hope that the double turn doesn't go bad for me, and then I can continue on. That really didn't happen. Obviously, I didn't get that. I didn't get. Uh, he got the double going into two, and that pretty much wiped the board. He focused all his fire on the uh, all all the snakes, and he pretty much won the game going into that. It was just table, but I'm still confident in my uh, my my plan because if if I wouldn't have done that, the table would have looked like that already from his turn one basically um just with all the damage he can put out in his um his shooting phase and his magic it would it would uh, it would have cleared a lot of me off and it would have really affected my damage potential uh i know seraphon's a hard matchup for a lot of armies it's it's always just been a hard matchup for me personally so um you know no big deal it was a close game at the end i'm i, I was happy with the outcome you know it came down to a point or two right there at the end so not not a huge crushing defeat so but we're going in our first loss today, going into game number two.
here at game two on the vice and um, I'm set up like this playing maggot Ken he's set up here we decided to make the big two towers garrison so he's got a bunch of play players in there playing Trevor so haven't had Trevor on the channel in a while if you remember way back in the day he beat me with uh, his Sylvaneth put the beat down on my zinch one tournament um, so we're going here I've got the option for first turn and I think I'm gonna give it to Trevor so Trevor will have turn one. All right, Trevor's turn, super fast. He basically, uh, he took uh, Frosh's advance with a couple of his three heroes, got that, ran them up a little bit, um, popped out the Plague Bears, let's go take a look. And, uh, and just sort of ran everybody up. He had to keep, he had to keep a couple, uh, he had to keep his, um, their, uh, the Beast of Nurgle, that's what I was thinking, Beast of Chaos, that ain't right. Beast of Nurgle, back on the objectives, if not my, Ken or I were going to pop in and uh, try to take those points. So he had to leave them. And if you don't mind, my summoning points. Yeah. I should have had one, two, three. Yep. Three and none. You have nobody in my territory. Or I mean, three. I have somebody in mine for three plus six. And then you have nobody in mine for seven. All right. Seven total. Yep, and um, yeah, he got a couple spells off Mystic Shield, and he got the two plus uh, the two extra wounds on his no one extra yeah it brings him up to two wounds each on the Plague Bears. Oh yeah, that's right, because they're two base now, and then they went three. So now we're going into my turn. See what see if I can get a battle tech. All right, so for my turn, I took Brooch's advance, ran the witches, the uh, stalkers, and uh, the eels. I auto ran those up. Um, I will admit that I totally forgot to shoot in my hero phase, but Trevor was super awesome to let go back and do that. In between Marathi and the Bow Snake shooting twice, I killed four um, Black Kings. So just to let you know how resilient those guys are, there you go. Uh, magic did nothing, so I don't I didn't even get a spell off. So. Two spells and then he uh, he dispelled the um, or he countered the black horse. So we're going we're going to move the points and then we're going to roll and see who's taking the next turn. Two. All right. So wrapping up my turn, um, basically I took take out a battle line unit. I could have took monstrous uh, take over here and just kept Marathi back and did that, but I decided to go aggressive. It barely paid off. It came down to like two or three wounds. I put everything my army had into taking out the um, the Black Kings, right? And it was hard. It was tough sledding. And no magic, once again, the only thing I got off was a Mystic Shield. I, I was able to do Wrath of the Skatesborn on the girls here. They came over and killed. How many? Uh, ended up total killing how many? Um, it was that turn you killed six Black Kings. Six Black Kings and a few of uh, three Plague Bears. Yes, yeah, three or four. Yeah, yeah, there's couple. four, but the yeah, gotcha. spell, at, in my turn, it would die. Yeah, so we, we, we did that. We got the battle tactic. And I did it with Marathi, so I ended up up taking six total points this turn now we're going into them uh, Nurgle turn two so okay. all right I did not get my battle tactic I only hold one point I got one point yeah. all right so Trevor's turn he Got a couple spells off. Um, I wasn't able to deny anything again. He moved this guy out. The one Abyss of Nurgle took out the Kenrai, but I still have Marathi in the air, uh, close enough to that point. He failed his bow tactic with Savage Spearhead. Um, he failed the, double, the charge over here trying to get into the eels with that beast. And the ladies lost one snake. I killed four or five uh, plague bears in return. And that was pretty much it. So going into roll off for a turn uh, three. Four. All right. So I'm going to take that. Keep it going. Uh, try. See if you get. All right, guys. So, sort of went through my turn three. I won the priority, and I took Monsters Takeover over here. And I got Mind Razor off on the witches, and I charged the eels and the witches up. They ran and came in. We kind of just called it because between all the shooting and magic, I got his great and clean one down to two wounds. So, just looking at the board and what was going to happen this turn, we just sort of said, "Yeah, you know, let's uh, let's make it a let's make it a call right there, and then um, add up some points." But good game, Trevor. Good game. I know it's a bad scenario for for his actual army on the vice and having lots of stuff starting back 
I got double turn and I got a priority when I needed it. So it just sort of all went my direction. All right. So there you had my game two on the vice against maggot Ken. Uh, Trevor's a fun guy to play against. He's been around the scene. He's a real laid back, easy going dude. And, um, like I said, he, you know, I made a mistake there. He was cool enough to let me go back and shoot. There was some times where, you know, I try to return those favors, uh, really what it came down to was I, I got the double turn and, and I probably didn't make the smartest move. The smartest move would have been to just do an auto like monstrous takeover, leave Marathi back. Um, but I said, you know what, this is, this is not the tournament to, to just sit there and be cautious. Let's go in and try to take out the, uh, the, the black Kings. Cause I knew if I took them out, the majority of his damage dealing would be done for that army. Um, so I, I had I had to rely on several different roles there to get in position, but we were able to take them out. Going in that double turn, that really put him on a back foot. Also, one thing that sort of hurt him too, being on the vice, is that hit those two back points, he had to allocate units to stay on there. And, you know, his beast of Nurgle had to stay back. It's not a giant detriment, but at the same time, he was having to allocate resources away from the rest of his army to sit back there and do it. Um, his battle tactic, he didn't get, he, he made a mistake, which is, this is a good for everybody to know. He, he took, uh, he, he took ferocious advance, I believe, uh, or savage spearhead to put two of his units into my territory. And as we went through the turn, I didn't really, I didn't know Trevor's plan. I mean, we're playing a a tournament, so I didn't really ask him what he was planning on doing with that. He he was under the understanding that he could use a summonable unit unit to accomplish that. You cannot. Uh, You have to have starting units there. So he was going to run one of the Beasts of Nurgle over, which he did, and he was going to then summon some more to to go in like a bile piper or something to go and get that battle tactic and as he sort of went through the turn i'm like how are you going to do this and he was like well i'm doing this is like we well, can't um i learned that hard lesson uh here not too long ago really play, since i've been playing doc because the kenneri that come in from reserves are kind of like a summonable unit so keep that in mind guys you can't summon units in to complete that battle tactic um that being said, me then turning around and getting, he didn't really do much damage because his big damage dealing unit was already gone by the time he got to his turn two. So it was really not a lot of wounds coming back at me. And then we went and I won that, um, I kept that, uh, didn't win the priority. We just, I won the roll off. So I took it again. And pretty much during about halfway through my turn, it was like, Hey man, you know, like you've got this. Cause it was, it was fixing to get pretty bad. I was fixing to take out his great unclean one and probably another unit or two that he had over there. And that would have just been, you know, I don't say game over, but pretty close to game over. And I've always said this too, that if my opponent doesn't, I am 100% willing to fold when you want to fold or continue to play. If my opponent just wants to throw dice, I'm going to be like, hey, I'll throw some dice with you. If my opponent's saying, hey, you know, this is looking like it's a, it's a, it's a loss, I don't really, <laughs> there's no need to go through here. And I can sort of see that too. I'm not going to argue against that as well. Because if you're sitting there watching me beat up on your army, then that's no fun for any, you know, for you to sit there and watch that. I've been on the receiving end of that at times where you're sort of like, all right, do what you do. <laughs> Roll your dice and go ahead and finish me off. So we just talked it out and sort of came to the conclusion, hey, you got this, you got the battle tactics. Um, we actually talked out what battle tactics he could achieve during his turn, and that's sort of where we went from it. So, you know, it was a good matchup and a good mission for me is what it really came down to because I feel that it would be it'd be a, a whole different game if it wasn't the vice and he had to be a little bit more compact, a little bit closer to me. You know, if we were playing something with a lot of center center line points, the Madkin or Nurgle versus Doc, you have to hope you can do enough damage to remove them before all that attrition really starts hitting you. All right, so we're one and one going in the final game of the day.
All right, guys, we're playing um, Savage Games turn three. I'm playing against Gavin, the uh, El Capitan of Harambe's Heroes. He's playing Kragnos with some um, squigs, and he out. Well, we, we both a one drop. He won, so Poid first. Who's taking first turn? You uh, are. Yep, and there it is. First turn, going in. See what I can do. All right, Gavin gave me the first turn. I took aggressive expansion. I move everything up. And um, took the point with a Kenarai. <laughs> Did like three total wounds across the board from shooting and everything. Staying very, very passive and holding back. I don't want to get too close. Bad mood should I pressed up all the way. Uh, I think priority is going to determine a lot. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Gets turn two. All right, Gavin's turn went pretty dang good, I think, for him. Um, he w teleported stuff up. Do you want to talk to this? You tell me. You tell the world what the hell you did. So I, I teleported. I got all my engagement off onto his front line, and with some sequencing, I was able to clear his screen and then get into the bow snakes partially with Kragno. So, like, cleared maybe half, two thirds of the bows. Cleared his witch elves. Um, and then was only able to do two out of the three wounds available on Marathi because of the, the running from the squigs. But I feel good about my position. Um, yeah. Priority is going to determine a lot. Yeah, and I tried to pull back a little bit. I, I screened the snakes three inches out, and as soon as I sort of started going through his sequence, I was like, oh, yeah, well, if he ends up popping the screen, Kragnos is still going to get a pile in. Kragnos was able to get in and do all the damage, and I didn't leave a CP for Battleshock, so I lost four extra snakes. So we're going to roll into priority turn two. And like, I've never needed a roll. Like, I need the roll today. Two. Two. And I win ties. <laughs> yes. Now, it's, now, we can, now we can continue the game because if not, it would be no point of play. <laughs> All right, so took broken ranks. Went for the squigs right here. Did a rally on them. You got like 10 back or something. You got a good chunk of squigs back for a rally. Yeah, four. It felt like more. I got uh, I got three snakes back over here from Rally. Uh, didn't really get any spells off, and the one I got was a withering. And I told Kragnos that I was like, "Screw it, I'm gonna put it on you." And then, uh, you know, of course, he denied it. Uh, but we took out the battle line unit, so the battle tactic did not take this point over here. Put nine wounds on Kragnos. Marathi took her three. This is where we're sitting, going into gets turn two. All right, so really good tactics here. He managed to get his first spell off to teleport his fungoid shaman way over here using then it, once he got the shaman over here he cast the bridge to pull Kragnos out of combat and take his battle tactic was aggressive expansion to take my point and his point. So getting both those spells off allowed him to get Kragnos out of combat without Kragnos having to walk. So then Kragnos gets to charge 3d6, comes in here, takes out the bow snakes and puts uh, the three wounds on uh, Little Marathi, so he ended up this, he ended up pulling like 11 points that turn. Score is 10 to 19. And if you, stop me if you heard this before, but I really need a roll. Three, five. All right. I got something. Any? I might all right, so that was a super fast wrap up to that game right there. Um, I didn't even have an after his turn. I think we pretty much just looked at the board, talked some things out. That was it. Um, I think possibly at one point, um, yeah, that was it. That was the game because we talked out everything, what he was going to do. I don't even think we really rolled any more dice on that. Um, I made a, a couple errors playing him on this, and this is stuff we talked about later because Gavin, if you don't know, is you know ranked as one of the best players in the world even though you look at um you know he's he's on a team usa for the for the world's competition he's like won almost every major gt we went to this year it seems like if not he's in the top five um so you look at his list you go you know what's so good about it was well, not only is it a decent list he's just knows how to run it um Huge mistake, and I, and after the game was up, I was able to talk to him about a few things. A couple of the things that I messed on was number one was that screen. Um, I screened my bow snakes about four inches behind the front line, 
if you don't want, you know, the pile, Kragnos has a, has a three inch reach and with the pile in, even with me, the eel still being alive that he had to pile towards the eels a little bit, but he was still able to get that, uh, get in range, um, with a lot of his attacks and really hurt the snakes. Um, I made a mistake too. Um, I used my last CP and didn't keep it for the snakes and I'd already had to use that. I used it on the, um, the, uh, Keltnar, um, ability so it reflects ones i was trying to kill a bunch of the squigs and i'll tell you what this though that that unit of squigs is no joke they're two wounds each you don't think about it but it was a, a little bit of a task to get through them um winning that prior priority going into two basically kept the game going for another turn if i would have failed that the game would have been over for all intents and purposes he would have just went through with kragnos and everything else and plowed whatever was left everything on the board would have been dead besides marathi um me getting that allowed me to do some things. And I really highly debated bringing it down on Kragnos. I didn't do it. And my tactic sort of changed that turn when I didn't get Mind Rager off. I just couldn't get any spells off. It was like I couldn't even roll high enough to get them off. And if I would have got Mind Razor, I would have put it on um, uh, the sisters. And I would have sent them and Marathi at Kragnos and took him down. Or, or well attempted to. With Mind Razor, I feel pretty good about it. Um, without Mind Razor, it kind of made me change my, my tactics and said, okay, sisters go forward, take out the squigs. Marathi, you just go engage Kragnos. And they, she actually, uh, Marathi actually did pretty good. Got him down, I think, at like eight or nine wounds left. And so I wasn't complaining about that. If I would have won the roll going into that turn three, more than likely I could have taken Kragnos out with just Matt Marathi and the bows. And then um, my snakes could have either taken a point or he, or they would have went straight ahead uh, into his and tried to try to get his main objective for four. It didn't get the roll and it's totally fine. And it's funny, just the sequence of what he needed to do to, to smash me during his turn when he rolled that. Cause number one, he had to find space to fit. Cause I had a pretty good board presence. He was able to get space to fit. He was able to cast a spell and, and get his teleport off, which I was out of the spell range, but he still got it off. Teleports over. Then he has to get the bridge off, which he does do. And then I also am in deny range and I did not. So there was three different roles right there that had to sequence out. Then, okay, so Kragnos is over there. He has to make a nine-inch charge, which is not hard on, you know, 3-6, but it's still, you know, possible to fail that. And to make it even worse that he he took his uh, shaman and charged him first to soak up Overwatch. So not that there would have been enough to kill Kragnos, but, you know, you never know if you get super lucky or something. So... He makes a nine inch charge with the fungoid and then or the cave shaman and then he makes an, his nine inch charge with Kragnos and that was pretty much like well even at that point if, like I said, if I would have won that priority, there would have still been a game because I felt that I could have went back and taken out Kragnos at that point. Um but with him winning and Marathi being in combat, he was gonna do the wounds to finish her off. I think she was sitting at like, you know, a nine or ten wounds at that point. So that's what it is. Uh, can't complain. I, I've I got to enjoy playing my daughters there at the end. The damage output is beautiful. I think there's some definite changes I would make to the list if I decided to redo some things, like probably adding in a cauldron or something, possibly. Um, but um, we're gonna we're gonna leave them on the shelf for a while. Wait for the new book. And you know, just to let you guys know, if you didn't already know, this was before all the new. Um, the new battle scroll or whatever it is that has hunters and the hunted and hunter and prey has come out. So we didn't have any of those points. That'll be on the next tournaments. They, those, all those points will be there. So, you know, that has, that has affected this list very heavily. You know, this was sort of like, the, I didn't even know that that was coming out until like four or five days after the tournament. So here I was going, wow, this really was the, um, you know, the, the last ride of the daughters of Cain for me for a while. So we'll see how they look later in the year. Um, but yeah, we're moving on to some tryouts and different stuff. So I'm hoping over the next three or four battle reports, you're probably going to see a different army or it, for sure a different list on each one. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching, you know, stick around, like give me any feedback that you, that you see. And, um, uh, 
like I said, the links in the description for all of the lists that you saw here, plus the winning list for the tournament, which was James West and running his Daughters of Cain. So he went 3-0 and with Daughters of Cain. And, um, you know, check that out if you're interested in what people ran and how and what they uh, how they how they played it. And give me any feedback, guys. So thanks for watching, and y'all be good.